everybody, I'm back. See this beautiful cake I have here? Isn't it great? And guess what? I didn't turn on my oven to do it. Come into my kitchen so you can see how I made this delicious chocolate cake. Hi everybody, okay, I am so glad you joined me back in my kitchen. This is gonna be another good one. So today I'm going to show you how you can make the most delicious, decadent, moist chocolate cake ever. And you know what? Uh, we're not using the oven. We're gonna do this on the stove. Oh yes we are. So let's sit back, get ready. I'm gonna reveal the ingredients to show you how it can be done. And it's really simple. Okay, let me show you guys the ingredients you're gonna to need to make this fabulous cake. All right, we have here one cup of flour, and inside the flour is one teaspoon of baking soda. I have here one third of cocoa, a half a teaspoon of kosher salt, one teaspoon of espresso, one cup of light brown sugar, a half a cup of sour cream that was sitting at room temperature, six tablespoons of unsalted butter melted. We have a half a cup of water, two eggs that were also sitting at room temperature, cooking spray, and we're gonna do one and a half teaspoons of pure vanilla extract. Okay, so, but before we assemble this cake, I wanna show you the materials that you're gonna to need to put this simple cake together. Okay, so here are the materials you're gonna need. Foil, 18 inch, about 18 inches. I'm gonna show you what to do with it, don't pass. A Dutch oven pot. Now the only thing a Dutch oven pot means is like it's a heavy pot that normally goes from the stove to the oven. So you're gonna need a heavy pot, Dutch oven pot, eight inch or nine inch round cake pan. Now I'm using an eight inch because nine inch will not fit in my Dutch oven. This does. So either, depending on the size of your pot, you can either use an eight inch or a nine inch. And inside this pan is parchment paper and it's already, I already put some um, shortening on the sides of the edges and a piece of parchment paper down here for sticking purposes. All right, measuring cup. Now, you have to put water in the Dutch oven because we're steaming this cake for it to cook. Now, I will show you that in a minute and how much water I use. A sifter. We're gonna sift the flour and the cocoa powder in the bowl because normally cocoa powder has lumps. We don't want any lumps in this cake. And by sifting the flour, it makes the cake lighter because it puts air while it's baking. That is perfect thing to do. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you what to do with the foil. So we're gonna push this stuff aside and I'm gonna show you what I want you to do with the foil. Okay, about 18 inches and what you're gonna do, you're just gonna make a, a snake. You know, you're just gonna roll it up like this, very simple. And then after you roll it up, you're gonna bring it in like this. Now, what this is going to be, this is going to sit in your pot like this. And what I'm gonna do is put the layer pan on top of that. Now here's where the water comes in. You gotta put water in here first about three quarters of a way up from the foil. Now I actually measured because every pot is different. So I measured two cups of water and I'm gonna put two cups of water in the pot before I put the uh, cake pan in. All right, so you know what? Now I'm going to put this cake together. Okay, let's put this baby together. Very simple. We're going to sift, we're going to whisk, and we're gonna mix. Oh, that sounds like a song. Okay, let's get started, enough. I have the flour, 
and the baking soda. I'm gonna put that in my sifter. And we're going to put the cocoa powder right on top of that. And here we go. See, you can see it falling. Oh yeah, baby. Again, this makes the flour bake so well in a cake when you sift first. And of course, like I said before, the cocoa powder must be sifted because it tends to have little tiny beady ball lumps. So we wanna make sure, and we wanna make sure we get all of that in. Okay, perfect. Now for the kosher salt, I'm actually gonna pour that in on top and whisk that in. Because this kosher salt is a little heavier and it may not fit through the little holes here of your sifter. So you just pour the kosher salt right on top. All right, perfect. Now I'm gonna set this aside and I'm gonna put the rest of the remaining ingredients in the larger bowl. All right, so we have the, oh, my water. We're gonna whisk in the half a cup of water, the teaspoon of espresso powder, remember coffee, chocolate, perfect marriage. All right, all right. Now our sour cream, half a cup. There we go. Well, I can actually smell this cocoa powder coming from the water. Mm. Makes me want a cup of coffee. All right, and we have the melted butter, six tablespoons, unsalted, and the brown sugar, one cup. Whisk. Let's whisk all these ingredients together. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna push this aside, and how can I forget my vanilla? teaspoon and a half. And I always eyeball. That's about a teaspoon and a half because I'm just good like that. <laughs> Whisk this like this. Alrighty. Now I'm going to add the eggs. Two eggs. Okay, again, let's whisk. It's a pretty brown color here. All right, I got that all mixed in. No lumps from the sour cream. Everything looks beautiful. Now I'm going to add the flour and cocoa mixture. And after you add that in, you're going to whisk, you're going to mix it gently. First, I'm going to start by whisking. And then I'm going to use my spatula to finish it off. And you're just going to mix it until just combined. We do not want to overmix our batters. Look how beautifully and creamy this batter is. Okay, I don't want to overmix it. So now what we're going to do, bring it over to the stove and get cooking. Okay, let's get started here. I have my water. You pour the water in the pot. Okay. Like I said, about three quarters of the way up from the foil. Put the pan on top of the foil. Now we're going to put the batter inside of the cake pan. All righty. Okay, so now that I have the batter all in the pan, just smoothing it out a little bit. You really don't have to smooth it out too much, but I'm just a little anal when it comes to my cakes. All right, that's perfect. Now, what we're gonna do is take parchment paper and lay the parchment paper over the top like this. And then we're going to apply the top of the pot Rightly so. Now, we're doing it this way because when it starts to cook and steam, we don't want any water falling into the batter. 
So, because sometimes it may happen from the top that you use. So to be safe, parchment paper and then a top. Now, you're going to put the stove on high because it has to come to a boil. Usually, it takes about maybe three minutes to come to a complete boil. After it's boiling, then you're gonna turn the stove down to low and then you're gonna cook it for about 35 to 40 minutes. Since I am using an eight inch pan, it takes a little longer to cook. But if you have a nine inch pan, the cooking time is approximately 25 minutes which you can check to make sure that it's complete by doing the old toothpick test and touching the top of the cake to see if it bounces back. But again, like I said, since I'm using an eight inch pan, the cooking time is about 35 to 40 minutes. Now, sometimes what I do, I put my face down, but not too close to see if I can hear it boiling. But since I just put it on, obviously it's not boiling yet. All right, so I'm gonna can't watch a pot to boil because it never boils that way. I'll see you in a few so we can assemble this cake together with some luscious buttercream frosting. Okay, all right guys, I'm going to reveal the cake. It's done, it's been sitting for a few minutes, but earlier there was still water on the parchment paper so I had to carefully lift it so that water would not spill on the cake. But I did that earlier, so I just shoved that to the side now, like I said, it's been sitting. You have to make sure you let it sit a little long enough for you to actually be able to pick it up without burning yourself. But look, look at that beauty all on top of the stove. Unbelievable. Okay, so now I'm gonna put it on the counter, let it sit a few more minutes, and then we're gonna decorate. Be right back. Okay guys, welcome back. So listen, the cake still has to cool a little longer because I'm, I cannot put the buttercream on a hot cake because it'll just melt right off. But I also made a layer yesterday because I'm turning this into a two layer cake. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna make this into a naked cake. And what that means is that I'm only gonna put buttercream in the middle of the cake in between the layers with some fresh strawberries. And the buttercream I made yesterday and actually this is how I did it. Okay, here are the ingredients. I use for my buttercream simple. We have four cups of confectioner's sugar, one cup of salted butter, that's two sticks salted butter, vanilla extract, about a tablespoon. I have heavy cream. I use three to five tablespoons of heavy cream, depending on how thick or how thin you want your frosting. Okay, and your sifter. Now, the first thing you have to do is cream the butter with a hand mixer or your stand mixer, whichever, whichever way you want to do it. And we cream the butter. The butter should be softened, by the way. As you can see, it's very soft. We cream the butter into light and fluffy. When it gets light and fluffy, it gets a pale yellow color. Spatula, look how nice and creamy that is. That's what you want. Okay, now, next you add the sifted confectioner sugar. Now, it's best to sift it because that way you don't have any clumps in your buttercream. So that's basically just like this. Put it in the sifter and you just sift the buttercream, I mean the confectioner sugar right on top of the creamy butter. Now, I already pre-sift my, I already pre-sift my confectioner sugar, so I'm just gonna add the rest to it. I just want to show you how I sift it. And this is four cups. Okay, now I'm just gonna do a little bit at a time because this stuff can fly in your face. Okay, on low speed. Okay, it's coming together very nicely. Now I can add some more. And I'll just add two more scoops. And then again. Nice. 
Nein. Beautiful. I think I could probably add the rest of the confectioner's sugar. Alrighty. Let's get this box out the way. And let's get. Okay, great. It's coming together beautifully. Now, after I mix this in pretty good, I'm going to add the vanilla extract. Of course, vanilla extract makes everything taste great. This is going to be a tablespoon. Oh, a little bit spilled on the side. Eh, so what? You know, I love my vanilla in my baked goods. Mix that all in. Okay, so now I'm going to add... Oh, it's really getting thick. So now I'm going to add the heavy cream. Three to five tablespoons. So what I'm gonna do is start with just two. Because I don't want it too thin. And I don't want it too thick either. So I put it on the cake. Okay, definitely gonna add another one. If you don't have any heavy cream, you could use milk. I'm gonna add four. But I like heavy cream, it makes it so creamy. And yep, this is the consistency I want. So I added four tablespoons of heavy cream. And you know what? It's all done. Wow, it's perfect. Four ingredients, you're done. Okay, we all cooled down and I began to put the buttercream on the cake. I'm making like a border because I'm gonna put the strawberries in the middle. So I'm using my mini ice cream scooper just to get some of the buttercream down for border. And then I'm going to smooth it out like this. I'm gonna tell you guys, this buttercream is so good. It tastes like a vanilla milkshake. And as I always do, the recipes will be in the description box at the end of the video. All right, so I'll smooth it down like this. Remember, I'm just doing the in between the layers and the top of the cake. So that's perfectly fine like that. Put this in my hot water that keeps, when you keep your offset spatula in hot water in between buttercreaming the cake, it helps smooth it better. All right, so let me throw some strawberries in the middle. Like this, spread it around because I'm gonna put some on top of the cake also. I don't want to put too many in the middle because I don't want the cake to slide. Just pat that down like that. Oh my gosh, these strawberries just smell so strong. I just love the way it smells. There. Now I'm going to apply the top part of the cake on top of the middle. Okay, so as you can see, I covered the top part of the cake with this absolutely delicious, creamy, buttercream. Now I'm going to pipe some pretty rosettes on the corners there. There we go. Very simple. Actually, I have enough just to make a few more little teeny ones in between. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be so good. I don't even wanna cut this, but you know what? After going through all this, you know I'm gonna taste this deliciousness. Okay, so now with the rest of the strawberries, put them in the middle. Oh my gosh. 
And remember, this cake was made on top of the stove. <laughs> Holla. Oh my gosh, done. Now doesn't that just look absolutely delish? Taste test time. Alrighty, I can't wait, I'm so excited. Mmm. Wow. Delicious. Rich, moist, melt in your mouth, chocolate, homemade goodness. You know what, guys? I think this is the best chocolate cake I've ever made. And on my stove. You have to try this at home. So good. So you know what? I'm gonna end this here because I want to finish and enjoy my delicious cake. I'm sorry, it's just so good. <laughs> All right, it's pretty incredible to know that you can make a cake on top of the stove. So thanks for watching. As always, I appreciate it. Give me the old thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Ciao.